Hey yo, recently my father has passed and I just want to take time to thank my co-workers for giving me uh, flowers to commemorate my dad's passing and I truly appreciate y'all. Alright, thank you very much you guys. Welcome to Nerd House Geeks. We are doing a deep dive into .NET Core 3.1. The startup class is special enough that we had to break it up into two parts. So how did we get here? We're, it started with the project file and what we did there was go over what it takes to install uh, Visual Studio on your machine and then we got into the project file and we did a deep dive into the project file. Then we did a second video, what is, what is a deep dial into program.cs file, which takes us to the third installment of this series of 10, which is the startup class. In the previous video, the program CS, we, we touched over a generic host, Kestrel, and all those things that um, were important to getting .NET Core applications up and running, okay? So, what is the startup class? Funny you should ask. <laughs> the startup class configures services and application request pipeline. Very, very important to your whole .NET Core. You know, after we get through this, then it's, it's, it's the happy stuff. So, we're gonna take a quick look at what the startup class looks like. So I'm gonna zoom in right here. Yes, this is nice. Okay, so the startup class must include a configure method that's required and optionally include the configure service method. Configure services and configure are called by the ASP.core runtime when the app starts. The startup class is specified when the app host is built. So we're gonna show you at a point right here. Um, so this arrow is pointing at the configure method and the more and more I look at that arrow, what a bad idea. <laughs> but we're gonna keep moving forward. And in that configure method, there's a lot going on here. So just bear with me as I walk us through this okay we will talk about the configure method first uh that's the required one and that is the one that um is called so we need to s learn what's going on in here the configure method is used to specify how the app responds to to http requests okay there are two values passed into the configure method. So first, I will tell you what is going on, then we will look at the code and go through it, okay? So the generic host, which we discussed in a previous video, uh, which you saw on your screen, uh, the previous video, uh, video two of this series, and what it does is create an iApplication builder instant. And so if you look at the configure method, there's the iApplication build it instant and passes it directly into the configure method. Now that the I builder, I application builder is available to the configure method and we keep in mind it isn't registered, it's not a registered service. It's not it's a registered service in the container. The request pipeline is configured by adding middleware components to an I builder instance, I application builder instance. I hate that. <laughs> In addition, the ASP.NET Core configures app behavior based on the runtime environment, using an and this using an environment variable which is provided by the I web host environment instance. So that's the tech term of it, but 
basically we're talking about those two parameters the i application builder with the uh, references app and the i web host environment which is the env the environment variable okay so in all that jargon we have three new items to talk about the i application builder the i web host environment and middleware very important to what's coming up so let's go ahead and jump into um, the i application builder okay we mentioned earlier that the configure method is required and that is why above is the in this in above is this code that tells the generic host to call the startup class hosting creates an ICAP application builder and passes it directly to the configure method. Now what you're looking at is the creates host builder method that we discussed in the previous video. And so I'm referencing this so that we can tie that method to the startup class, which is the, is the primary focus of this video and the next. So this right here is where the generic host, it's actually passing this, this, inf this information directly to the startup class. Okay, so next. The iWebHost environment, we're gonna talk about that now. To determine the runtime environment, ASP.NET Core reads from the following environment, var environment variables. Environment variables are prefixed with .NET underscore and our key value pair, okay? Using the default configuration, after ASP.Core reads the appsettings.json, appsetting.environment.json, and secret manager, then it loads the environment variables. It's important to understand the order in which all that is executed. We're, we're gonna get into the app settings.json, but those, those things are loaded first, then the environment variables. So while you're configuring stuff using the app settings.json, it's important to know the order in which all of that is loaded. So see what we have here on the screen. The iWeb host environment interface provides information about the web hosting environment. An application and, and application is running in. Let me try that again. The web environment, the web, the iWeb host environment interface provides information about the web hosting environment an application is running in. So in the previous video, we talked about Castro. So just to know. Environment variables, of course, are prefix. So we'll move on. So we're gonna go through middleware. So we've already addressed uh, our previous two slides. We talked about the application builder. We got into the web host environment and that's where we get our environment variables from. Uh, and now we're gonna discuss middleware. Middleware are components which is executed on every request. This diagram is part of that Microsoft documentation that the, uh, the link below will get you to. So uh, this image is from the Microsoft website. Mm -hmm. And so the middleware in this examples, the request comes in and the middleware um, intercepts this request and then it starts doing things to it. So middleware one, then to the next middleware, and then to the next middleware three, and then it starts propagating back up and the person gets their response. And so, and that's where we're talking about middleware are components which is executed on every request. So. Every time you request pages that are 
uh, .NET Core, whatever middleware you configure there, every request goes through that. Okay, beautiful. All right, now we're back to the config method. Okay, so we understood what middleware was and all those things and uh, mentioned previous. So let us take a look at this code here now. The if statement is checking the environment variable to see if they are in the development environment, okay? And that environment is supplied by the generic host and the web host that is cross-platform platform that is Castro, that's, that's where all those environment value, values are referring to, okay? Or IIS, whatever the hosting environment is, okay? If it is true, the application instance call the use developer exception page method. Well, what does that method do? Capture synchronous and asynchronous exception, uh, exception instances, instances, instances from the pipeline and generate HTML error response. Of course, you understand that what that page looks like. If you have gotten an error <laughs> in .NET Core in your development environment, it gives you all the trace and stack information on the page. And that thing looks like this. And we've all seen this page. So that's what's going on there. So I'm assuming that you have seen this page <laughs> or pages similar to this. And uh, uh, of course, you would not want this page in production. Um, it is a hacker's dream for you to give them this information. But in development, it's okay. And we, we see this page a lot. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to the configure method. We're gonna dive into more of this code here, okay? The app.use development exception page is adding middleware to the pipeline. And that means every request this evaluation takes place. See, that right there is the middleware. Environment dot is development, that's middleware. That, that's gonna be respond, that's gonna be checked on every request, okay? Then we are using, uh, then we are gonna look at the code where it says, okay, then we have use routing. Use writing, routing adds route matching to the middleware pipeline. This middleware looks at a set of endpoints defined in the app and selects the best match based on the, on the request. Use endpoint adds endpoint execution to the middleware pipeline. It turns the delegate associated with the selected endpoint. So, that is middleware, that is how it works. This is a very simplified config method, or the default. No matter what is going on, the URL you enter in the browser, it will render hello world. So you can see that the use endpoint, no matter what, it's gonna give you hello world because it's gonna route that match to the root, and then it says whatever it is, respond hello world. And mm -hmm. so right now I'm going to record, I'm going to demo the advanced, <laughs> I can show you a demo of uh, an advanced config method and middleware. Okay, meaning we've touched it in me. <laughs> All right, so this right here is middleware and in this particular case it's for uh, a web api and uh, i was just not wanting to leave you with the basics so i really wanted to dive into this and go like okay this is a complicated one so let me show you this one so all right and i know this very well i i did this uh probably still need some work anyway um, so if you look at this particular one, it's similar, but um, so it has that initial, so we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. It has that initial check for is development. 
use the development exception page. But if it's not development, okay, now it's gonna go to the use exception handler and when there's an error, it's just gonna give you this message right here. Um, and in this case, I'm dealing with an API, so yeah. <laughs> and then we have the use HTTPS redirect. Uh, so if someone tries to con connect to this API, it just automatically redirects it to HTTPS. Okay, it's gonna do that every time. And this U Swagger, uh, a lot of this isn't in the scope, but all of this is that middleware we're talking about. Uh, in the app builder, all its middleware that we're... Uh, I've installed Swagger on this, in this, in this project, because it's used for documenting the uh, APIs. Um, and so, this middleware uh, um, sets up things for Swagger and I will probably have to talk about APIs now that I open up this can of worms, but after this video series. <laughs> uh, whoops, let's go back now. Here it is. Um, and so this is just the links to setting up Swagger, using routing, using authorization, endpoints, map controller, and uh, yeah, there's still more to be done there, but <laughs> I just wanted you to see the middleware portion and how it's being considered in every request. And I just wanted to show you a more advanced one than the basic one that we started off in this project file, uh, just so you could have an understanding. So here, after this, and this is the end of this video, we're gonna go into configure services and um, this is part one. <laughs> I did it, I got to the end, and uh, thank you very much. Hey, if you found this video very helpful, click the like button below, and please don't be shy to subscribe to Nerd House Geeks. We are constantly updating this channel with new and interesting content. If it's more convenient for you to see us on Facebook, please like our page, and when we have updates, we put them on Facebook, and you'll be informed there as well too. And to the entire LinkedIn community, thank you very much for your support. We also have a company page up there that you can follow. And we'll keep content updated there as well. So thank you very much.